Hello there, Mr. K here, the mediocre painter, and I'm doing YouTube videos to get you into the wargaming hobby because I've made the mistakes so you don't have to. So today I'm going to be talking about contrast paints. These are a new range of paints from Games Workshop that are causing a lot of kerfuffle on the old uh, wargaming side of things because a lot of people are saying they're the best things since sliced bread and Games Workshop spent a huge amount of money flying in from some of the best painters from around the world to actually come to the UK and actually try these things out before the release and film them and all this kind of stuff. So I bought a few of them just to give them a try, just to see what they were all about. And basically the intention of these things is, is to provide you with a base coat and a wash in one. Basically the idea being to save you some time. And they come in these slightly larger than normal pots. This is a Blood Angels Red. I've got three of them. I've got Blood Angels Red, an Ultramarine Blue, and a Hegelian Green. Just thought I'd cover you know, the, the, those three colours just to give them a try. The idea of them is to basically save you time, get people who have got all these unpainted miniatures and hordes and stuff, and try and get them painted and get them painted up faster. I've had a bit of an experiment with these things and um, I'll do uh, I'll switch to a different video to actually show you uh, some of my end results but just to give you a, a few tips on them make sure you've got a very solid prime before you begin when you use these things they're very very hydrophobic and so what that means is they'll basically just run off the miniature unless there's something for them to grip onto so if you, say, missed a little spot, for example, with your Prime, normally you can get away with that if you're just using a normal base coat. You can't with these. So you've got to have a really solid Prime. Also, if you like painting in, like, darker Primes to begin with, like a grey or a black, you won't get quite so good a results. The clue is in the name. You know, these are contrast paints. And what I've found is you use white or a light grey, you get much better results in terms of the contrast, unsurprisingly. Um, so, but even so, even on a grey though, you still get um, good results. You get a very nice solid colour, you just don't get the contrast and so the shading is a, a little bit more subtle. So I wouldn't say that um, they're completely useless when you use them on like a darker prime. You just don't get quite as dramatic an effect. So I'm gonna talk about um, this fella, Molog, and, um, and a bit more close up and you can have a look at what I'm talking about. So here's an example of a model that I've used the contrast paints on. And I've done some other things on this model to kind of give you a means of comparison. So this is Molog from Molog's Mob, um, which is uh, a Shadespire set. He's a push to fit miniature. I've undercoated him in a white. And white I've found definitely works the best when you're using these contrast paints because it gives you, unsurprisingly, the highest ratio of contrast, which is what you're looking for after all. So here on the mushroom, basically I've used a Blood Angels Red and you can see it does a really nice job of coverage, giving you a nice solid color as well as a shade at the same time. I have to admit, I'm really pleased with that. It looks really good. If I look at the main body, I've actually used an Ultramarines Blue here, um, you know, to do the, the main part of the body. And then I used an Achalian Green on the top of his shoulders and on the backs of his legs and such. I tried to do a little bit of blending there to get it sort of to blend in. Didn't quite really work out as I thought it was going to do. The two contrast mediums kind of repel each other. It's kind of interesting when you actually work with it and um, I couldn't quite get it how I wanted. I wanted it to be a smoother transition than that. But still, I'm quite pleased with the way it works. You can see it gives you like a really nice, good color, the color that you would expect, and a shade at the same time, which after all is the idea of this thing. On his club here, I've actually used um, a wood brown, which is from the Coat d'Arms paint, which is a, a brown that's known to separate a little bit. And you can see that I've kind of got a bit of a shading effect going on here with just regular paint. So I'm pretty certain these contrast paints were inspired by old paints that used to separate like that. And that's where it ultimately came from. Here, basically, on the, the wee guy here, 
I've done him in a much more traditional way, just basically with a goblin green and then an ink wash. And you can just to see what the difference is between the contrast and, and doing this. And, and what I can see here is that the contrast gives you a bit more of a stark contrast between the two. But equally here, I did paint this guy um, you know, a, a green first. So the contrast isn't going to be as far because it's not starting from a white base up. Also on this mushroom here, I used a slightly watered down um, amethyst silver to try and get some shading going on on its own as well. So you can see you can kind of achieve somewhat more subtle and similar effects just by, you know, leveraging existing paints that you've got. Uh, you know, this is not necessarily a new thing. and I'm pretty certain that, you know, this paint separation sort of thing that happens with certain types of paint probably got somebody thinking and that's when ultimately what inspired this contrast range in the first place. Overall I'm very pleased with it and um, it definitely has achieved very nice results and it's definitely saved me a step so I'm all for that and if you're painting horde armies contrast paints are really going to be beneficial to you they achieve good results nice and quickly. So what are my overall opinions on the contrast paints? Well on the three colours that I've got I really like the way they cover the model, really nice, nice and solid, and I really like the contrast elements to them. They do, yes, they do genuinely save you a step. It is like doing a colour and a wash in one go, which is the idea. They definitely do work better on bigger models um, as well, and um, no great surprise from what I've used is they work better on higher quality models as well because you've got a greater depth in typically on the higher quality models between the recesses and the front of the model and so the contrast side of things tends to work better on the lower quality models that i've tried them on like uh, on zombie side miniatures for example i don't quite get such a such great results but this is all part of him playing with this so these are a well worthwhile addition to um, your model uh, painting art um arsenal shall we say it's definitely worth having a few contrast paints i've got some you know some a red and a green and a blue and i'll definitely be acquiring some more i think you know some flesh ones would be useful i'm really looking forward to giving the yellow a try because yellow is always a bit of a pig to uh, paint with so if you can get like a solid white down on a miniature and then do a yellow and get the contrast element uh, all done in one go that would be a fantastic, um, you know, time-saving, labor-saving device, as it were. Any other thing as well is um, they are, um, if you feel them after you're done, they are kind of um, not like normal paints in terms of the way they feel. They've got kind of a sheen to them when you run your finger over them, and they do rub a bit. So do make sure that you uh, spray your miniatures once you're finished with a matte varnish. Otherwise, you might be disappointed because they will chip a little bit more, I think, than regular paints, which is something you'd probably be doing anyway, but you know, it's more important, I think, with the contrast side of things. So overall, worth acquiring, definitely worth having in your arsenal, if it's, and particularly so if you want to paint things up quickly. But even you know, for regular painting, they produce such excellent results. You know, they could be incorporated even in, you know, your Golden Demon miniatures and things like that. I think they, they can actually give you um, be uh, better results in some circumstances than the traditional way of doing it. They can be possibly a little unsubtle, but still, I think if you work with them, I think you can probably get very fine results indeed. Hopefully you found this interesting. If you did, please like and subscribe. I will be doing more. I'll see you next time.